Stay all day. Stay all day. Tuned into the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day, do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve, where is it? Is not yet shown up. And we put all this together into one bundle, in one package, one mindset, one method, one philosophy. This show, this masterclass here that is called Work On Your Game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day. Congratulate yourself on the excellent decision that you made to be here today because today's topic, we're talking the results-based business that life is. I once heard college basketball coach John Calipari, who coaches as of the date of this recording, he coaches at the University of Kentucky. And he's sent uh, many players to the pros from Kentucky. Kentucky's been an elite program the whole time that Cali Perry's been coaching there. And he talked about this once. He was on ESPN. This was years back. He was on ESPN doing one of those, you know, when they call in, the coach calls in, and the broadcaster on Sports Center is talking to him over the phone. And the broadcaster on ESPN was asking John Cali Perry, how do you, how are you able to recruit so many talented players all to the same team? The broadcast was basically trying to figure out, Cal Perry, Coach Cal Perry, you have all these talented players already on the team, but then you go to the house of some five-star basketball prospect who's projected to be in the NBA in a year or two, and you're trying to pitch him to come to the team where you already have a whole bunch of other guys who are also five-star prospects who are already on the roster. How and why would that prospect, the high school kid, why would he want to come to a team where he's going to have to, he's going to be in competition with all these other players who are already good, already on that roster? How does he even know he's going to get playing time when a player says to you, hey, Coach Kyle, how do you project I'm even going to get on the court and get playing time here when all these other talented players are already on the roster before me? Or, or Coach Kyle, how do you decide who gets to perform? Who gets to get in the games when you got eight players who are McDonald's All-Americans all on your roster and only five guys could be on the court at one time? How do you even do that, Coach Kyle Perry? And Coach Kyle Perry answers the question by saying, listen, I'll tell you, Mr. Sports Center guy, the same thing that I tell my players. We are in a performance-based business, performance and results based business. I think he said performance based, but what we're talking about here today is results based. When you perform, you want to produce results. All right, this is the next step. Perform to produce results. He said this is a performance based business. So whoever is performing, they play, and whoever's not performing is not going to play. And you're going to have to compete against other players who understand the exact same thing and iron sharpeneth iron. So all these talented players being on the same team, we're all going to make each other better because we all have talent. We're all trying to perform and you're all trying to get to the next level, which is to play in the NBA. And there's something else John Kyle Perry did. He didn't bullshit his players talking about getting four year degrees and all that. He said, hopefully you get your degree later on down the line. But the bottom line is you want to play in the NBA, right? Okay. So let's get you to the NBA. And that's my job here is to get you to the NBA. And one reason John Kyle Perry has been so successful in getting these talented players, first of all, to come to his school and then getting them to the league is because he knows that's really what they want. And he doesn't, he does not uh, bullshit and beat around the bush with his players or their families about, hey, you're going to be in school for four years and all of that. It's like, hey, maybe you'll get your degree later on down the line. Hopefully you do. But the bottom line is you want to play in the league. And right now, the way the rules are, at least as of this recording, is you got to go to school for one year or do something for one year before you can go to the league. I'm going to best position you to get to the league, and he has a track record of actually doing that. And I would think, I haven't heard this other guy say this, but I would think the same conversation would happen had this question been asked of a guy like Nick Saban, who coaches the football team at Alabama University, that he has all these talented players already on his roster, yet year after year, he's able to recruit even more talented players to come join that roster that already has all that talent, not even knowing if they're going to play, not knowing if you'll earn a roster spot, not knowing if you'll earn playing time, let's say. How is that? Because Nick Saban probably pitches to those players. One of the things in his pitch has to be, hey, this is a performance-based business. This is a results-based business. If you produce results on that field, you'll play. But if the person at your position is, if another player at your position is producing better results than you, then they're going to play while you're on the sideline. And that's just what the game is. That's the way it's going to be in the NFL anyway. So you might as well get used to it by coming here at Alabama. So one thing you got to earn your spot too, the results. Players on these teams, Alabama and Kentucky in basketball, they end up going to the highest level of their sport, the NFL and the NBA respectively. So if you want to create more business for yourself, I'm out of the example now. If you want to create more business for yourself in life, 
the most valuable thing you can have in your arsenal is your ability to create results and to be able to create results consistently. With this ability, you can get yourself into any room, you can make anybody know your name, and you can get whatever done you wanna get done even when it's just you by yourself because you have the ability to create results. You can start a fire with your ability to produce tangible results alone for specific people. If you can produce a tangible result for a specific group of people, you can get things done as much and whenever you wish. That's what today's class is about. Point number one, today's topic once again is results-based business. Point number one, history books are written by the people who produce results. And I don't necessarily mean the actual writing of the book. What I mean is the people whose stories get told 50 years, 100 years, 1,000 years after they're done, after they're gone, are the people who produce the people who created results, the people who lost, the people who got cheated, people who felt like they were treated unfairly, the people who felt like they were just one opportunity away from their big break, the people who felt like, you know, if somebody would have helped me out, I would have been more successful. They don't get to tell their stories and their stories don't get told. History forgets those people. Their memories, the memories of those people get buried in the sand. Why? Because they did not produce results. The people who have been dead for 50 or 100 years, yet we still hear about them from people like me. You still read about them in your books. People still reference them in their speeches. Those are the people who are producing some form of result. Anyone who did not produce a result, they don't get mentioned. I'm going to say that one more time. People who do not produce results do not get remembered. They do not get mentioned. Their stories do not get told. Now, over time, every now and then a story gets dug up and surfaced of someone who did not produce a result, but it's a very interesting story. It's, it's something to the story. If any of you know the board game Monopoly, there's an interesting story to how that board game came about. And the person who is credited with creating that game is actually not the person who created that game. And I wrote an article about that back in March of 2020. So go read that article and you can see for yourself what actually happened with the game Monopoly is not what you think happened with the game Monopoly. So that's an example of a per person who actually created that story. Nobody knows their name, but the person who credited themselves with creating, creating the game rather, everybody knows their name because their name's on the website still to this day. Their family's still making money off Monopoly, whereas the person who actually created it died broke. Well, you can go find out about that yourself. I mean, the person who created Chicken McNuggets or it wasn't Ronald McDonald. Right, but it was somebody whose name we don't know, but they weren't able to get there. They weren't able to get the result of having their name connected with what they did, with their creation, with their invention, with the result that they produced. So the bottom line, you got to remember, ladies and gentlemen, history books are written by the winners, written by the people who produce, written by the people who not only win, but they make sure they get credit for the wins that they created. Now, you may consider this kind of... Uh, Maybe a little bit uh, dark, a little bit cold, a little bit Machiavellian. Well, so is life. Life is dark. Life can be cold. Life is a little bit Machiavellian, meaning you got to make sure not only that you do good things, but also you have a reputation for doing good things. And not only that, every now and then, understand that you got to do bad things. You just don't want to make sure it's not connected to your reputation. People don't think you're a bad person, but at the same time, you do bad things when you need to get them done. Whether you do them or you get somebody else to do them, but... That's the way life is. All right? Life is not all uh, rainbows and sunshine. Sometimes you got to do some things. Sometimes you got to get your hands dirty to get things done. Or sometimes somebody got to get their hands dirty for you to get done what you want to get done. So whether you get it done through somebody else or you get it done yourself, it has to get done. And if you are not able to create the result, first of all, get credit for the result, second of all, and get the benefit of that result, third of all, then you may end up with some disappointments in your life. That's just what it is. Now, you don't have to like that. You don't have to like the way that the game is set up, but that is the way the game is set up. So you can either play the game or you can get played by the game, but it's your, it is your choice. 100 years from now, nobody's going to remember the details and the narratives that we get so caught up in on a day-to-day -day basis. All right. Only thing people are going to remember in the year 3020, or that wouldn't be through, that's 1,000 years from now, 100 years from now, the year 2120, the year 2120, the only thing people are going to remember about 2020 is what? The results that got produced this year. 
and it's going to be reduced down to a couple of a few sentences at the most. All, right, all these narratives and the things we're paying attention to today mean absolutely nothing to people 100 years from now. Nobody's going to remember. Nobody's going to care. So it can't mean anything to them because they're not even aware of it. Same way you're not aware of anything that was happening in 1920. Tell me something that happened in 1920. All right, you probably could tell me one or two things at the most without Googling it. Even if you Googled it, you might be able to find five or six. All the rest of it, nobody cares. Only thing that people remember are the facts and results that survive time. Most stories and excuses and narratives do not survive the test of time. The only thing that survives are results. I'll tell you a story about Bill Russell. If you don't know who Bill Russell is. He's known as the greatest winner in the history of basketball. He won, and he actually is. He won 11, count them, 11 NBA championships. Playing with the Boston Celtics in the... 50s and 60s. Bill Russell is known as one of the top 10 basketball players in the history of the game. And someone once asked Bill Russell, hey, what was your motivation? What was your inspiration to win so many championships as a basketball player? I mean, you won more than everybody. What drove you to do that? And actually, Bill Russell, another thing about Bill Russell, the NBA's NBA Finals MVP award is named after Bill Russell. It's called the Bill Russell NBA Finals MVP award. Because this guy won so many championships, it only makes sense to name the, champion, the finals MVP trophy after the guy who won the most finals. And Bill Russell said, in answer to the question, what was his motivation to win so many championships? He said, early on in my career, I realized that all these awards, such as MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, All-Star Game, I realized that these awards are, first of all, very political and second of all highly subjective they're all based on people's opinions and that's an actual fact these awards mb mvp all-star game all nba defense player of the year they're all based on votes so if you win the vote you get the award if you don't win the vote you don't get the award it doesn't matter what your stats are and bill russell said when i realized that those awards are all based on opinion and they're all political in many ways and this is way this is back in the 50s and 60s all right this is even before the civil rights movement, ladies and gentlemen, Bill Russell was a black guy, in case you didn't know, playing in Boston, which is not the most, uh, not the most, was not the most welcoming city for black people back at that time. So Bill Russell saying this, this is actually based in truth in his real life experience. He said, to continue his statement, I realized, I decided rather, that I would just go out and instead of trying to win awards, which I might or might not win despite my performance, I'm just going to go win as many games as possible. Because, Bill continued, if I win every game possible that I play in, then that will go down as historical fact and it cannot be altered by somebody's opinion. I'm giving you that story to drive home point number one. We're still on point number one today's topic, results-based business. History books are written by the winners. The reason why we remember Bill Russell is not because of how many shots he blocked or what his playing style was or any of the other narratives that were probably going on at the time that Bill Russell was playing. The one thing we remember about Bill Russell is the very first thing I said about him. He won 11 NBA championships. Nobody can change that. No opinion is going to alter that. There's nothing you can say about any other player or any other anything negative or positive about Bill Russell is going to overshadow the fact that he won 11 NBA championships. That result will live on forever in, in the basketball world, at least. Until or unless somebody does better. And so far, ain't nobody come close. Point number two. Today's topic is results-based business. Understand that relationships, though they are a very valuable part of life, it's very important to have relationships and know people and to have networks, as I talked about a couple days ago. Relationships cannot make up for a lack of gain. Let me say that one more time. In case you thought you didn't hear what you heard, I said, heard me say. Relationships cannot make up for a lack of gain. If you do not have the ability to perform, your relationships cannot cover that up past a certain point, let's say. You will either, when you have a lack of gain, you will either reach a level where the connections you have cannot take you any further past that level, or your connections will decide that they don't want to vouch for you anymore because your weak ass game is going to make them look bad. I mean, think about that. If you got people that you know who could help you get into a certain room, help you get your feet into certain doors, help you get a certain position, they will vouch for you. All right, there's a certain level they can get you to that right, at that point, your game has to take you any further that you're going to go. And your relationship to get you somewhere, but if you don't have any game, that's where you're going to get stuck at and you might end up going back downstairs. 
And also at the same time, if you have no game, but you're calling on your relationships to help you get into a certain room and your relationships are looking at you like, all right, I'm not sure you're good enough to be in that room. They might not want to vouch for you because they're putting their reputation on the line by putting in a good word for you. But if they don't think you're any good, why would somebody want to put in a good word for you? Now you're putting them in a bad position where they got to either tell you no or they got to ruin their own reputation by putting you somewhere where you don't belong. Don't do that. If you know you have no game, don't go asking for favors. Don't go calling in favors with people knowing that you ain't good enough to deliver on the check that you're asking them to write on your behalf. Do you hear what I just said? Let me say it again. If you know you don't have the goods to deliver, don't ruin your relationships or hurt the people close to you by asking them to write a check on your behalf that you do not have the money in the bank to cash. When I say money in the bank, I mean that metaphorically for skills. Everybody, listen, this is the thing about relationships, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody out there will want to link up with you when you have the game. When you have game, or the relationships will come find you. You don't even have to worry about it. But when you don't have game, or at least when you're producing results with your game, let me say that, not just having game, but produce results with it. When you don't have game, here's my request to you. Do not put your contacts, people you know, in the tough position of having to tell you no or of blowing you off or ignoring you when you don't have the game to deliver on the hookup that you are asking them for. Stop doing that. Don't put your people in a bad position. All right, it's uncomfortable for them. It's uncomfortable for you. You know you don't deserve it. You know you wouldn't be able to deliver on it. Don't do that. Stop that. Point number three. Today's topic is results-based business. Understand that results make relationships, ladies and gentlemen. Relationships do not make results. If you want to build relationships, become a results-producing machine. And I guarantee you a bunch of people will want to build relationships with you. And they will be beneficial for you. There will be people who bring things to the table that you don't bring to the table. Once you prove you're capable of producing a certain result consistently, other people will want to build relationships with you. Now, if you have a bunch of relationships but you can't produce results... That can only take you but so far when, and when the people you have relationships with will notice, hey, this individual ain't producing no results. Why am I in a relationship with them? And that relationship will dissolve. But when you can produce results, or you'll be able to meet people and connect and have friends and have people want to do stuff for, with, and to you forever, as long as you can produce results. While knowing the right people can put you in the right places, understand that those friends cannot produce on your behalf. Knowing the right people can get you in the room, but when you're in the room, now people are going to be looking at you saying, all right, what can you do? And if you can't do anything, your relationships can't make up for that. And you're going to end up losing relationships if, they, if those relationships help get you in the room and then it shows up that you can't produce. Somebody's going to be calling your relationship like, yo, why would you send this bum ass motherfucker in here knowing that they can't produce? Now, I'm not asking you for anybody anymore. Now, you have messed up their reputation because of your inability to produce results. That's why I said, if you know you don't have the game, you know you can't cover that check, don't ask anybody else to write it on your behalf. If you are not producing, some of your friends won't stay friends with you for long. That's just the way it is in life, ladies and gentlemen. There are some people right now who are cool with you and they like you and they want to be around you simply because you are able to produce a certain result or produce results at a certain level. And if you stop being able to produce results at a certain level or stop being able to produce certain results, those people ain't going to be your friend anymore simply because, listen, y'all are friends because you can do something for them and they can do something for you. But if you can't do anything, why would anybody want to be your friend? I wouldn't. You have some friends in your life right now that you're cool with because they can produce results at a certain level. Not because you really like them that much as a person. You might not even know them that much as a person. You're cool with them and they're cool with you because it's a symbiotic relationship. You can produce something for them, they can produce something for you. As soon as either one of you can no longer produce, neither of you has a need for the other anymore. That's the way it is in life. Now again, there are many people who won't say this to you out loud. I'm telling you to your face, all right? at least through this screen, through this mic, however you're listening to it. Some people are cool with you because of your ability to produce. You lose that ability, they won't be around anymore. All right, now, you can lament that. You could say that people are fickle. You could say that people are fake. You call it whatever you want. Now, as long as you keep producing, you won't have to worry about it because they're going to stay around. And you can leverage them the same way they're leveraging you. Relationships accrue to a person who can produce results. When you're winning and everybody knows you're winning and you don't have any friends, at least at that moment, all right, don't worry. 
All right. Before long, you're going to have so many friends, you're going to have, to, you're gonna have, a pick, have your pick of friends. You'll be able to choose who your friends are. You won't have to worry about it at all when you can produce results. Because as soon as word starts getting out, uh, you're going to have so many people wanting to be your friend, uh, you don't going to know what to do with all these people. Now, when you have no ability to produce results, all right, that's what they say when they say you find out who your real friends are. You want to know who your real friends are? All right, stop producing results. See who's still around. All right, those are your real friends. You'll be able to count them on your hands. Let's take the S off. You'll be able to count them on your hand, period. Less than five. You will have plenty of prospects, though, when you can produce results. When you have relationships but no results, again, you'll find out who your real friends are. But this episode ain't about real friends. This episode is about producing results. Now, we might talk about real friends in a later episode. Maybe we won't. Because this is the work on your game show. This show is about production. This show is about results. This show is about performance. All right, you want a show about um, you know, friends and uh, having uh, the, what do they call it? I forget what the phrase is. But friends and being nice and uh, endorphins and connecting with other people in a, a positive, friendly way. And you know, relationships mattering more than the work and all of that. This might not be the show for that. Maybe I'll talk about it from some angle when I figure it out if I decide to even think about it. But otherwise, I'd rather talk about production and performance and producing results. That's what this show is about. So if that's what you want to do, remember what I just said. Heed what I told you. Relationships will come to you quick, fast, and in a hurry when you produce results. You stop producing results, there they go, there they go. Those people are gone. Let's recap today's class, which is results-based business. I heard John Colin Perry talk about this. How do you get all those great players to come to your team when everybody's talented? How do you decide who plays? He says it's a results-based business. Whoever produces results, whoever's performing, that's the person who plays. And the reason players kept coming to his school, that's one thing. Another thing is I produce a result, John Kyle Perry, that is. I produce a result of sending players to the NBA. That's what they want. They want to go to the NBA. Kyle's just a pit stop for them. I produce that result. That's why players keep coming to my school. Bottom line. Nick Saban can say the exact same thing. In life, your ability to create results is the most valuable tool that you have, at least when we're talking in the work world and in the business world. With that, you can get into any room, make anybody know your name, you get anything done, even when you're by yourself. You can start a fire with just this ability. Point number one, history books are written by the people who produce results. Not necessarily their writing, but the producers are the ones whose stories get told. You want people to tell your story when you're not around? Produce results. If you ain't producing any results, nobody's going to tell your story. Nobody's even going to care about your story. Nobody will even want to hear your story if you are not producing results. If people aren't asking you about your story, I'm going to give you a hint. It's because you're not producing any results. You start producing results, everybody's going to want to know your story. Most stories and excuses and narratives do not survive the test of time, but the people's, but the stories of those who produce results, those survive. Bill Russell, greatest winner in basketball history, 11 NBA championships. He said, my goal was to win as many games as possible because it goes down as a historical fact, a historical result, not somebody's opinion that can be altered and changed. Point number two, relationships cannot make up for a lack of game. You will either reach a level that your connections cannot take you any further past or your connections will not want to vouch for you since your weak ass game will make them look bad. Everybody want to link with you when you have the game, but when you don't, here's my request. Stop putting your contacts in a tough position of telling you no or asking them to write a check for you that you do not have the game to cash. Point number three, results build relationships. Relationships do not build results. While knowing the right people can put you in the right places, friends cannot produce on your behalf. And if you are not producing, some of your friends will not be friends for long. Relationships accrue to the person who is producing results. When you are winning and everybody knows you're winning, but you have no friends, you will not have to worry about making friends. You will have plenty of prospects to choose from. When you have relationships but no results, you're going to hit a ceiling, that concrete ceiling I've been talking about, and you're going to lose your friends. And as long as you're producing results, you'll have plenty of people to choose from. Don't worry about it. So go produce some goddamn results. Work on your game. Dre, all.